That was a puny, skinny wee runt of a fella who's constantly on the move. I'm definitely a big fan of Asus Swift 5 laptop. This 14 inch laptop is super skinny and weighs under a kilo and yet it packs some pretty solid performance. I actually reviewed it around this time last year, but it's been fully updated for the end of 2019 with a fresh new 10th generation Intel Core processor, bit of Wi-Fi 6 support and a few other little refreshed bits here and there as well. Now at the time of shooting this video, the new 2019 version of the Asus Swift 5 cost just 899 quid from the likes of Curry's PC World, which considering you get some nice dependable performance in a slim and light chassis, it's pretty solid value for money. I've been using the Swift 5 2019 as my full-time laptop for a couple of weeks now, and here's my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, as far as the design goes, nothing has really changed here. The Swift 5 is still impressively slim and incredibly lightweight at just under a kilo. It's basically 995 grams. Every time I pick it up, I swear to God, it's was like forgotten to put the components inside of this thing. It does just feel like a plastic shell. Thankfully, it is one tough plastic shell though. There isn't an inch of flaccid chassis action anywhere on this thing. You can poke it, prod it, twist it, squeeze it, do whatever you like to this thing. It's absolutely fine. I usually just bung it straight in my backpack. Don't bother strapping it into the laptop compartment or anything. Shove it in there with headphones, sharp implements, whatever you want. There's not a single scratch or scuff on that lovely dark blue chassis. That metal alloy surface and definitely proven rugged as well as lightweight. And the overall look of the Asus Swift 5 is nothing particularly special. It's very simple, straightforward design, but it looks suitably sleek and elegant. And what really impresses here on the Asus Swift 5 2019 as well, especially compared with the likes of the MacBook Airs, is the connectivity. On this thing you've got a full-sized USB 3.0 and 3.1 port as well, but Asus also managed to cram in a proper Thunderbolt 3 port, which is something you rarely see at this sort of price point. And that could be used to hook up external displays, or you've also got an HDMI connection as well if you need a more traditional option. And the fact that Asus managed to find space for all of this on such a thin laptop has basically blown my b**** off. It's absolutely incredible. Now if we open on up the Acer Swift 5 2019, once again you get a 14 inch IPS display packed inside. Like the Huawei Madebook and plenty of other ultra slim laptops, this display pretty much fills that inner lid. There are only very skinny bezels down the edges and at the top as well, slightly thicker down the bottom but really impressive design all the same. Suddenly that screen no longer bends back the full 180 degrees like it did on some of the previous models, it stops off around about there. But I had absolutely no problem finding a comfortable viewing angle whether I was just like lounging in bed, chilling at my desk or absolutely crammed into a commuter train, no worries. As usual, you get full touch controls as well, so you don't really have to bother with that dinky, annoying little trackpad more often than not, which is good. You do get some multi-gesture support as well, which works on some websites. Unfortunately, if you're working in the likes of uh, Docs on Google Chrome, for some reason it doesn't work there. But apart from that, it's perfectly responsive, nice and easy to use, and of course, when you actually give the screen a bit of a poke as well, those hinges prove nice and stiff. Not too stiff though, uh, so the screen doesn't wobble about all over the place. As far as the quality of the visuals go, well, that's basically the same as the previous model of the Swift 5. You get a nice full HD resolution, keeps all of your photos and your videos looking nice and crisp. You have to really cram your face up to that screen to see any individual pixels, and that's not much fun, so probably don't do it. The display maxes out at just under 300 nits as far as the brightness goes, and that's absolutely fine. Certainly in the UK in November, you're not going to need any more than that in order to see what you're doing outside. And once again, Asus panel smashes it for colour reproduction as well. You get 100% of the sRGB gamut covered and 78% of the Adobe RGB as well. So nice natural looking output. As for the stereo speaker setup, well here on the 2019 model of the Swift 5, they're once again buried away underneath. So unfortunately they are firing that audio directly down into your desk or your crotchal region if you've got it resting on your lap. As for the actual sound quality, well it's absolutely fine. A little bit tinny on the top volume and let's face it, that top volume ain't exactly going to win any awards for blasting eardrums out of people skulls but it's absolutely fine for just kicking back with a bit of netflix or youtube or something in your homestead Let's just boost this up to maximum global launch and in that pull back the curtain on some fresh gaming laptops as well as updating some old classics so again yeah it's not going to exactly blow your head off uh, in amazement or anything like that but it's absolutely fine just kicking back in a quiet room now you get a well-sized chiclet keyboard slapped there inside the swift 5 and it's been slightly updated from the previous model as well i did have issues before with a space bar uh, where i wouldn't quite register presses if i was hitting it on the far left or right edges that seems to have been completely eradicated now so the only complaint i really have is the fact that the page down and page up buttons are 
still crammed in there alongside those tiny arrow keys, making them all really difficult to individually strike. The old type in action seems a little bit firmer here on the new 2019 model of Swift 5 as well. So you do have to tap fairly hard uh, when you're smashing out an essay or something like that, especially when you're touch typing. I found I managed to adjust to it pretty quickly though, and once I did, I managed to get those good lightning fast speeds without many issues or errors at all. That backlighting is back in action as well and absolutely fine. You can toggle between low and high intensities or just completely switch it off if you like using the F8 key, so nice and quick and simple. On the trackpad front, well, there is one. It's a reasonable size. It's once again got integrated mouse buttons, but it actually does the job. But frankly, I'd just rather stick with the touchscreen or plug in a mouse if you're at a desk. Now for this updated version of the Asus Swift 5 laptop, you get your performance provided by a still fresh 10th generation Intel mid-range platform. My review model was a Core i5 1035G1 backed by 8 gigs of RAM, and that allowed the Swift 5 to breeze through basically any everyday task and gives it a bit much needed grunt for some more demanding apps as well. As far as the graphics go, you get Nvidia's GeForce MX250 GPU slapped in there as well, so don't exactly go expecting it to smoothly edit 4K video or play the latest titles on nice strong detail levels, but I found that I could play the likes of Risk of Rain 2 with a nice dependable frame rate on those default settings, and it was a perfectly smooth, very playable experience indeed. And one of the other very welcome new additions here in the 2019 model is the addition of Wi-Fi 6, which is pretty rare on laptops in general, let alone any in the sub £1,000 category. So that's a nice bit of extra future-proofing for the 2019 Swift 5. And on the storage tip, perfectly acceptable there as well. It's a single 256 gig SSD for all of your apps, media, and whatnot. A large chunk of that is available at uh, initial boot as well as a little bit of crapware on there, like some Norton antivirus, which I had to remove immediately because it was just bombarding me with messages every five seconds. Ugh. But it's a nice nippy SSD as well. So good news if you end up copying a lot of large files or working on uh, video edits and things like that. As far as the battery life goes, the Swift 5 once again proves it is a portable powerhouse. If you're working in the likes of the Edge browser, then you'll probably get about 10 hours of mixed juice. So that's a bit of web play, a bit of media stream and shenanigans like that. If you're going to be working in the likes of Google Chrome, I found that I tended to get around eight hours of mixed juice because it tends to sap the power a little bit quicker. But again, that's pretty much enough for a full working day. Rounding off the features, you get a dinky little fingerprint sensor crammed in here beneath the keyboard. And despite the fact that it's a very slender little scanner, I found that it worked absolutely perfectly. I very rarely had to scan my digit more than once to actually unlock the laptop. And you also get a teeny weeny little one megapixel webcam crammed into that dinky top bezel just above the screen. As you'd imagine, it is a bit poo. Your Skype sessions will look quite grainy. And if you're sitting there in a dark room trying to video chat, you'll basically end up looking like some sort of hammer horror monster. But to be honest, it's one of just a handful of minor little complaints on what is otherwise a great all round ultra portable device. Super slender, super skinny, super light, and of course some pretty dependable performance, solid battery life and strong connectivity as well for a price that's under a thousand pounds. So there you have it, my updated thoughts on the fresh new 2019 slash 2020 model of the Swift 5 laptop from Acer. Are you tempted by the Swift 5? Maybe you've used one of the previous models, maybe you might be tempted to upgrade. To be honest, there's probably not quite enough of a boost in there to uh, really warrant the extra thousand pounds or so unless your old Swift 5 is on its arse basically. But for everyone else, I'd say yeah, jump right on in face first for sure. So let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a lovely week people. Cheers. Love you.